In today's video, we're going to look at four fundamental concepts that you'll find in Profound.js. First one is creating Node.js modules that act like ILE programs so that you can call them directly from your existing applications. Secondly, how to pass parameters in and out of those modules that you create. Third, how to use NPM packages. This is very important to connect to the outside world, and in this particular case, we're going to use an NPM package to connect to a SQL Server database. And then how to use fibers. Fibers is important in turning those asynchronous API into more of a top-down API that you can call in a more like a transactional business application. Okay, so first of all, I've already started a Genie session. In this particular case, I used the classic skin because there's not going to be very much to the user interface. And the program that we're going to be working with is this INV print 01 c which is a CL program that ultimately prints uh, an invoice. So if I were to call this particular program as it stands, uh, this is the output that we'll see. It went ahead and printed an invoice. It specified what order this was for, and it specified the sales tax rate that was used when printing this invoice. If I were to go into that program and look at the code, it's very simple. So first of all, you'll see that it's a program that takes two parameters, the order number and the location. Those are declared down here below. It also declares a field for a tax rate, and you can see that that's hard-coded in here to 6.5. And then it goes ahead and calls an RPG program that actually does all the processing and all the work to print the invoice. And it passes to the RPG program the order number, the location, and the tax rate, and then prints the message. Now, in this particular scenario, the tax rate is hard-coded, so it's hard-coded at 6.5%, and this works well when there's one location that we're serving customers out of. But let's say, in our scenario, the company got bought out and got merged into a bigger parent company, and this parent company has multiple locations, and depending on which location you ship your product out of, you may have a different tax rate. So what you may want to do is you may want to create a program and make a call to a program, we'll call it Get Tax Rate and we'll pass to it the location and also the tax rate as a parameter. So let's prompt this. So the location here is more of an input parameter and the tax rate is more of an output parameter. So both of these are going to be passed by reference. Now what if in our scenario the parent company held this data, held, held the sales tax rate data in a, my, in a SQL Server database. So if that were the case, this is where Node.js would be very handy. And we're going to take a look at how you would create a program like this in Node.js that talks directly to a SQL Server database. So first of all, let's exit out of here and let's go ahead and compile this. So the program is now compiled. It is now ready to call this get tax rate and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a proxy program using the command pjs create proxy and this proxy program is what really is going to pass the information along to node.js so we're going to create a proxy program Pro program is created so the, the proxy program by itself doesn't have any functionality the functionality has to be written on the node.js site now, I have Profound.js installed on my desktop computer, and I used the pgsmyip command earlier within Genie to redirect all the Node.js traffic to my PC so that I can do development up here. And since we're trying to connect to the SQL Server database, the first thing I'm going to need to do is find an NPM package that allows me to do that and install the package. So, the command to do this is npm install, and then I need to specify the package name. Now, the package that I found, I went to npmjs.com, and I did a search for a SQL Server database driver, and I found this package called MSSQL, and this is what we're going to use over here. So the command would be npm install MSSQL. So I hit enter. This would connect to the npm server, download the package, and install it within my project. Now, I already had it installed prior to this, so in this case, it simply just updated it. So that would be the first step, is just to install the package. Next, let's go ahead and start the server, and I'm going to go ahead and use node start and I'm going to pass along the dash r log parameter this is the runtime log this just helps me see every line of code that's executing when I run my program and this helps me verify that everything is functioning as expected so I'm going to go ahead and start the server with this option and now that the server is running I'm going to go back to my editor and start writing 
the code. Now here's the overall structure of what a program like this might look like. And any program that you intend to call externally from IBM I uh, would actually look just like this. So the first line here uh, is simply bringing in the NPM package for the SQL Server database. It gives us this SQL package that we can use to access that database. Then we declare the function and we call it get tax rate and it receives two parameters, the state or the location and the rate. And then we define these parameters and we, it's important that we give these parameters the right data types, but it's also important that we specify the ref parm option on these parameters. That simply means that those are reference parameters, which means they can both receive values and they can also output values as well. So after setting up the function, that gives us a callable program, but we must also export it as a runnable function, and we must also export the parameters so that an external program can actually call it. So that's the basic setup. Now we're ready to do the, uh, the Microsoft SQL Server stuff. But before we do this, we should talk about fibers. The reason fibers is important is because whenever you look up the documentation for pretty much most packages on NPM, including the SQL Server package, you'll find that a lot of the examples show things being called in a, in a synchronous manner and the data comes back into what's called a callback, a separate function that receives the output. So these asynchronous callbacks, you know, in some scenarios they work very well. For example, if you're actually building an event-driven application, maybe it's a chat server or something like that, but they're not really all that great for transactional business applications. So what we have are examples like this. So this is what our code would look like with callbacks, where we actually need this function to receive the information. So when we connect to the server, there's a function that receives the information. When we actually query, make a query out to SQL Server, there's also another function, another nested function that receives the information. But what we'd rather have is the ability to do all of this without any callback. So what we really want is something like this, to be able to just connect to the server. When the connection is established, we'll go ahead to the next line of code and that request you know, the results from the server. And once the results come back, we just simply process those results. So sequential versus having to use events. Now, to get rid of the callbacks, Profile.js provides a number of fiber API. And the easiest one to use is one called wrap. So this pgs.fiber.wrap. All that it does is it takes an existing function like this sql.connect and it turns it into a new function. In this particular case, we're just calling it connect that can be called without a callback. And the same thing is done here with this query function. So now that we have this concept, we are ready to go back and finish out our get tax rate program. And this is what the final result looks like. Again, we have the function receiving the parameters we connect to the server, we request uh, using a, an SQL statement the results, and then we process those results and ultimately once the tax rate is received, we place it back into the rate variable, which is a reference parameter, and this information is sent back, in this case, to the CL program. So let's go ahead and try this now. I'm going to go ahead and over here to my session, and let's uh, go back and call that same routine and you can see that um, the, one, the invoice got printed but the sales tax rate is actually modified. The sales tax rate came from the SQL Server database. Now we can verify this by going to our command line and because we turn the R log or the runtime log we can see every line of code that actually executed to get the information. So we can see that um, out here the connection was made and that took about 32 milliseconds. We can also see that uh, the results came back. That took about 28 milliseconds. And we can see that the rate that came back is actually 5.75. That came back from the database. So this actually ran pretty quickly. You can see that in less than one tenth of a second, it was able to go out and retrieve the appropriate rate and pass it back to the CL program. Now again, just to verify that this is working and this is dynamic information, Let's go back and try the same call, but we'll pass in a different location. So now the output gives us a different tax rate uh, that corresponds to the location that we specified. So I hope you enjoyed this little example, and now you know how to use NPM in conjunction with your existing applications. Mm -hmm.